You probably remember this dinosaur, a small hissing predator that spits venom, fans out a neck frill and kills a man with sticky acid-like goo. That was Jurassic Park's Dilophosaurus, and almost everything about it wasn't quite accurate. Because in reality, this animal was neither tiny nor venom spitting. It was bigger, faster and far more dangerous, but also weaker and more misunderstood than anybody realised. Today, we're setting the record straight on one of prehistory's most misinterpreted predators, Dilophosaurus, whether really. When Jurassic Park introduced Dilophosaurus in 1993, it became one of cinema's most memorable monsters. But Spielberg's team took extreme creative liberties. For one, the real animal was nothing like the chest-high creature that attacked Dennis Nedry. In truth, Dilophosaurus stood around 2 meters tall at the hip, stretched over 6 meters in length and weighed close to half a ton. That's roughly the size of a modern grizzly bear. It's also not likely that it could spit venom. There's zero evidence for any venom glands, ducts or specialised teeth for injecting toxins. I will caveat this, however, by saying that soft tissue does not fossilise, so this is based purely on our current understanding. And that iconic neck frill? Exactly the same as the venom. There is no evidence for it at all. It was a pure movie invention added by the filmmakers for dramatic effect. So, if it didn't spit or frill, what did the real Dilophosaurus actually do? The first fossils of Dilophosaurus were discovered by a Navajo man by the name of Jesse Williams in Arizona's Kienta Formation in the 1940s, dating back to the early Jurassic period around 193 million years ago. It's one of the earliest large predatory dinosaurs known, appearing not long after the dawn of the Jurassic period. Its name means two crested lizard, and those paired crests running along the top of its skull are its most distinctive feature. But they weren't weapons or defensive plates, they were thin, fragile and full of air spaces. So, rather than for combat, they were likely display structures, visual signals for attracting mates, intimidating rivals or communicating within the species. Despite its size, Dilophosaurus had a surprisingly light build. Its skull was long and narrow, with weak points near the joint between the upper and lower jaws. This meant that its bite force wasn't particularly strong, weaker than later carnivores like Allosaurus or Ceratosaurus. This suggests that it probably didn't kill large prey with its jaws alone suggesting that instead it may have relied on speed and precision using its claws to wound or hold struggling animals, or even scavenging carcasses when the opportunity arose. Or perhaps it did shoot venom. What's your story? For decades, scientists debated whether Dilophosaurus was a top predator or an opportunistic scavenger. Its delicate skull hinted it couldn't handle struggling prey, yet trackways show it was a powerful, fast-moving hunter capable of long strides and bursts of speed. Some paleontologists believe that it may have hunted in small groups, using its size and agility to bring down weaker herbivores like Sarasaurus and early prosauropods. Others argue that cooperation simply wasn't necessary. It could have just simply relied on ambush tactics and brute force where needed. Recent studies also suggest its upper jaw could flex slightly, helping it tear strips of flesh from carcasses rather than to crush bone. More like a giant reptilian scavenger bird than a classic dinosaur predator. So, while Jurassic Park turned it into a venom-spitting demon ripped right from Nedry's nightmares, the real creature was something more… nuanced. A transitional predator bridging the gap between early Triassic carnivores and the great theropods that would soon follow. However, in 2020, that all changed thanks to Adam Marsh and his team. They revisited the earliest fossils of this long misunderstood dinosaur and reanalyzed them, and what they found revealed new truths. Dilophosaurus wasn't weak after all and its skull wasn't as delicate as once believed. Its neck and torso were also far more robust than first thought. It still had a relatively light build and a flexible jaw, but it was a completely competent predator, not the fragile oddity that it was first thought to be. In short, it was no venom-spitting monster, but it was one of the earliest truly capable hunters of the Jurassic period, fast, efficient, and perfectly adapted to its environment. So, was Dilophosaurus truly worse in reality? Maybe not. It didn't spit venom or fan a frill, but it was still a capable and no doubt frightening predator of its time, one of the first true giants of the Jurassic, a creature that earned its place in history not through movie magic, but through evolution, survival and that unmistakable double crest rising above the desert sands of ancient Arizona. This has been Prehistoric Fact Files and now you know why Dilophosaurus wasn't what Hollywood told you it was. It was something far more real and potentially scarier. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe and leave a comment letting me know what creature you want me to focus on next. But until then, stay curious.